Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. Uh, we're still waiting for some people to join us here, and we're a little early. So just hang with us, and we'll be with you in just a few minutes. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea Peliquin, and I am the events manager here at JW Pepper. We're so excited to have you all here with us today. We are going to, uh, today, we are teaming up with our friends at Alfred Music to bring you a selection of new titles and some new and improved titles uh, that you can use to recharge your remote teaching. We've got some exceptional guests today, and I know you're going to get some great information. But first, a few housekeeping announcements. If I can make the technology work, there we go. Okay, first thing I wanna make sure you know is that we are going to be giving everyone who is here with us today a certificate of attendance. You're gonna get this in an email tomorrow. So there'll be a link to the certificate. All you have to do is print it out and add your name and you can use that for whatever you can use that for. And you'll be all set. If you have any questions, um, either uh, after the webinar or, or if you don't get that email for some reason, please shoot me an email at events at jwpepper.com and we'll get right back to you. So, okay, let's continue. How to participate. We want you to participate with us. Uh, but before I get into that, I do want to make sure everybody knows that we will be recording this webinar. In fact, we are right now. And a link to the recording will be sent to everyone who registered tomorrow as well. So you'll get an email with a link to the recording and a link to the certificate of attendance. So you can rewatch it and uh, pick up any information that you may have missed and you can share it with colleagues, et cetera. So don't worry, if you have to step out, we've got you covered. We'd love to have you participate with us. So type any questions you have for our panelists into the Q&A area. So you'll see that down at the bottom or at the top of your screen, depending on your browser. Uh, type any questions you have in there and either we'll address them as they fit into what we're talking about or we'll address them at the end. We might even just type in your answer if we know it. So today I'm joined by Alfred's Senior Event Specialist, Michaela Graham, and we'll both be here behind the scenes answering your questions as we go and I'll pop back in at the end. So one other really fun feature that we've added is an upvote feature to the Q&A panel. So you'll be able to see the questions coming in. And if you have that same question, you can just click the thumbs up sign next to that question to signal your interest. That way you won't have to type it again. We'll try to get to the most popular questions first. And so those rise to the top of the list for us. 
Michaela and I will also be providing links to anything we're talking about in the chat window so you can click on them right away, but you won't be able to type anything in there. It's just chatting for us. Okay. Uh, one other thing is that you are all muted automatically. So asking questions in the Q&A box is the best way to communicate with us. And finally, you will be asked to complete a brief survey when you, when you leave the webinar. Please take a moment to give us your feedback. And if you have any other ideas for other topics you'd like us to take on, please let us know. We really appreciate that. So let's get started. I'm so pleased to introduce today's presenters. Krista Hart is a former music educator with a passion for choral music. Following her middle school teaching years, she spent nearly a decade assisting directors in choosing literature for their own choirs and curating selections for dozens, uh, dozens of choral reading sessions and clinics, across the country. Um, she continues to help people experience the joy of making music now by working for the marketing and editorial teams at Alfred Music and performing with the Pasadena Master Chorale. And Andy Beck is a prolific 450 popular choral works, vocal resources, and children's musicals currently in print including the highly regarded method books Sing at First Sight, Foundations in Choral Sight Singing, and the Vocalized Warm-Ups. Andy is in demand as a guest conductor, choreographer, adjudicator, and clinician for educators and students throughout the United States and beyond. We're so excited to have you both here with us today to share some great resources. So welcome, Andy and Krista, and let's get started. Thank you, Andrea, for that warm welcome. Yes. We are so glad to be here. Krista, what's it like in California today? Well, it's only going to be 82 today, so fall, I guess. Oh, nice, nice, excellent. And we're having a, a warmer fall day here in Raleigh, North Carolina, but beautiful nonetheless. I am thrilled that we have this opportunity with Pepper today to talk to people all over the country. And I know it's a cliche, but I was thinking this type of event is exactly what they mean when they say music brings us together, all of us, in a whole new format. So I thought I would, yeah, I thought I would get started with a little singing because I'm hoping people at home are going to sing along. So I'm going to do a little bit of warm ups for you now. And the warm ups that I'm going to share come from, of course, my book, Vocalize, which Andrea mentioned a moment ago. Sing after you hear me. So I like sort of this call and response teaching. I always did it live in the classroom, and I think it works really well in a digital platform like we're doing right now. So I'll sing, then you sing. Flying on the breath we ride. Now you. Now you listen. Sighing open inside. You sing. I love this exercise because it has lyrics that talks about some of those vocal techniques, techniques, how important it is that we ride the breath and that it's sort of like a sigh. And one of the greatest things that I ever taught my singers, I was focusing as an early uh, young teacher on the open space outside, but it's the inside space that completes the whole picture for, beautiful, for that beautiful vowel quality. I'm gonna move on to the next one. Every phrase we sing should be complete with a final cutoff that is neat. Each and every consonant is planned so the audience can understand. The final cutoffs fall on beat three in all of these phrases. We're gonna run this accompaniment track and I want you to sing along twice through at home. Try it with me now.
Excellent. Okay, now here's where it gets fun. As we've transitioned to a whole new way of teaching, so many of us remote or partly remote, Alfred took this collection of Vocalize. I got to pick my favorite 25 exercises and we turned them into interactive slides. So you now can get your own personal copy of these 25 exercises on slides, which has the melodies, the little descriptions of what to sing, the audio accompaniment tracks are right there on the slides. So as you create your own copies and send out copies to your students in whatever learning platform they're using, I know a lot of us have Google Classrooms, drop them in Google Classroom and your kids can sing along at home and develop those vocal techniques. Here's a little video where I demo a little bit more of these interactive slides. Check it out. I am so excited to share this adaptation from Alfred Music of my warm-up collection called Vocalize. Knowing that you need to keep your students singing while at home, we have created the Vocalize Sing Along slides. Check these out. It is a Google slide presentation that you will own your very own copy of to drop in your own learning platforms, Google Classroom or whatever you use or share out with your students. The purchase of one slide deck means you can share it with all of your students in your choir. Now let's check out when they receive the vocalized slides, what will your students be doing? Here's what it looks like. I'm just going to click to Move us to the first slide where we have an introduction and the directions. The directions are very simple. Basically, you will see an audio icon on each and every page. Read the instructions, press the audio icon, and sing along. Okay, the first exercise that shows up is the lips, the tongue, the tip of the teeth. Read these instructions, which remind us that we need to use good diction. And by using those parts of the mouth, the lips, the tongue, and the tip of the teeth, enunciate clearly as you sing. And then students will simply press this audio icon, and away we go. The lips, the tongue, the tip of the teeth, carefully singing each word. Enunciate, enunciate, so that the lyrics are heard. The lips, the tongue, the tip of the teeth. Of course, every exercise modulates to many keys, so you're really warming up the full vocal range when you sing with these slides. Let's try Sing Legato, Sing Staccato. Sing Legato, Fa La 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 La. Sing Staccato, Ha 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 Ha. I'm going to move on to the very next one. Never Louder Than Lovely, all about using tone that is beautiful and not oversung. Never louder than lovely, never stronger than sweet, never more volume than beauty. Singing like this is a treat. Let's see what else we have. There are 25 exercises in this product that you may send the whole deck out to students or create different copies where you just send them specific exercises geared to whatever skills you're introducing or reinforcing. I hope you enjoy the vocalized sing-along slides. And I also wanted to mention that fans of Vocalize have also enjoyed this book called the Vocalize Canon Collection, where I collected 55 rounds and canons and wrote out accompaniments for them. Uh, these rounds can be sung in two, three, four, some of them up, go up to six and eight parts. So depending on the level of your group, you can do all kinds of uh, layers. I want you to know that recently this book became available digitally, so you can buy a PDF of the whole book and have it ready to go, and then you can do what we're doing here, share screens with your students and sing some rounds back and forth. I'll demonstrate this next one. It goes, sing me a song when I wake in the morning. Play me a tune in the cool of the night. Now I want you at home to sing this in canon with me. So I want you to be number three. We're going to ignore number two and four. 
I'm going to come in at number one. When I get to that third bar, you enter right at the beginning and you'll be singing in canon with me. See how this works. I'll begin. Sing me a song when I wake in the morning. Play me a tune in the cool of the night. Cool of the night. Very fun. Here's a little bit more on the Canon Collection from Vocalize. The Vocalize Canon Collection. 55 rounds for choral and classroom singing, compiled and arranged by Andy Beck. This impressive collection of rounds is ideal for warming up, sight singing, technique building, and more. From traditional and familiar to original and unexpected, each of the tuneful melodies easily stacks into two, three, or more layers. Supportive piano accompaniments are lightly orchestrated on the enclosed CD, which also includes reproducible singer pages. this canon collection with exercises from the original Vocalize book to complete your daily choral warm-up routine. Or perform a favorite on an upcoming concert. So I was reading one of the questions that just came into our question window about how do we get kids to sing at the same time on something like Zoom. I am in agreement with you. It's not really possible. The technology, we are not all like the, the sound and the picture, it doesn't all line up perfectly together. So what I've been doing in my own rehearsals, honestly, is people are on their honor to be singing along at home. You know, like I did there with when we sang the canon. You all were mute. I hope you were singing along. Now, if you want to check in with individual students, I think your best thing to do, and I've been doing this, is schedule one-on-ones or small groups and then invite certain students to sing, turn on their microphone, unmute themselves, and sing back and forth with you. This is the best solution that I've come up with so far with the technology that exists. So I know someday we'll get to the point of all singing or playing our instruments together. But at this point, folks are mute on the other end so that all those sounds don't become muddy as that question said. Let's move on to our next thing. This one is so innovative and it's entirely brand new. It's not taking an existing product and making it work for remote, but it's designed for remote. This is called Choir Bites. Choir Bites are these little images, almost like poster images or memes on choral concepts. Now, they're much more than just that motivational speak that we sometimes know. They actually teach important choral concepts in a visual way with articles to be read and then review questions that follow. Here is a little bit more on this. I have a demo video we're gonna run right now. Introducing Choir Bites, interactive slides by Brody McDonald. A look at the first slide for a brief introduction and the directions which say, carefully read the text of each Choir Bite article, then complete the five review questions that follow. Answer fields are fillable, so you may type answers into the slides and they will be saved. Use Choir Bites as a remote learning curriculum, supplemental material to discuss during rehearsals or as substitute lesson plans. A look at the contents page and you see there are 24 key choral concepts covered. Let's review Shine Bright Like a Diamond. We click here to arrive at the beautiful imagery of a choir bite, as well as some teaser text about the article to come. 
The very next slide is a brief article. In this case, the four C's of pricing a diamond become an analogy for choral singing. Those are color, cut, clarity, and carrots. After reading the article, singers learn that by paying attention to the four C's, we can help our choir shine bright like a diamond. The article is always followed by a review. And when you view the slides in editing mode, you will notice that all the answer fields are fillable so you can easily type in and save your answers. Purchase of Choir Bytes includes the right to share the entire deck or select slides with all of your choir members on a learning platform of your choice. So I think all of these interactive slide uh, resources will work very well in an asynchronous classroom. That means you aren't actually meeting your students in real time. You're assigning things for them to do outside on their own and turning them back into you. Um, I also want to mention that all of the interactive slides, you get a personal Google slide copy, but also the PowerPoint. And for many people, the PowerPoint is very easy to adapt to other specific technologies. I am going to turn this over now to my co-host, Krista Hart. I know Krista has some other exciting things to share with us. Hi, Krista. Hi, Andy. Thanks. Yeah, I want to uh, let you guys know about another interactive slide product that we have that's based on an Alfred bestseller. It's Accent on Composers, which focuses on the lives of 22 master composers. And you might recognize this book cover that I'm holding up and these black and white reproducible student pages, but look how gorgeous it has been, how beautifully it's been converted to this uh, interactive slide format. I just love seeing all the color that uh, is on the page this way. So let's watch a little video that will show you exactly how this works. This is a quick tour of Accent on Composers Volume 1 Interactive Slides. This slide deck includes information on 22 different composers and students are going to read about the composer, listen to a, an example of their work, and then do an assessment about what they've learned. Let's take a look at one of these composers. On the first slide, you're always going to get a portrait of the composer and a biography of their life and work. The next slide features factoids about the composer, a chart that shows you what type of music they composed, and a timeline about what was going on in the world while the composer lived. Next, we move into the listening section. We're going to focus on one particular piece by this composer. There's background information about it and a description of it. You also get a second-by-second -second listening guide and the audio is embedded right here in the slide for the student to listen to. The final slide for each composer is the review slide. The student will type into each box their name and their answers. So they're reading, listening, and completing all the assessments all within these slides, and then they return it to you when complete. Purchase includes the permission to share this slide deck with your school or organization through Google Classroom, email, or whatever platform you're using to teach with. You will get a link to a Google slide deck to copy, and you'll also get a PowerPoint file of these slides. Thanks for watching. Okay, so that's Accent on Composers, and that's an example of an existing Alfred title that we have adapted to the uh, interactive slides format. But for lots of other of our classroom resources, we've made a digital PDF available to download. So this next slide that we're going to see 
uh, is showing you a sampling of some of these products that are available to download on the JW Pepper website. You get the, the PDF version of them. And so it's really easy to have those things just a click away, whether you're at home or at school. And it makes it very simple to share those reproducible student pages digitally if you already have the book in a digital format. One of those uh, downloadable books is The Women of Western Music, which is biographies and activities covering the lives and music of 18 noteworthy composers, uh, teachers, and performers who just happen to be female. I love this resource because I know we're all striving to present a more inclusive view of music history. So this uh, book will help you do that. You can use the materials in this book to supplement uh, resources that you already have, or you could do a complete unit of study just on female musicians. Uh, here's a word from the author of this book, music educator, Anna Wentnett. When I uh, started putting together the book, I thought it was going to be all composer, similar to Alfred's books like One Page Composer Bios or Accent on Composers, but it quickly broadened from there just because women's roles in music have been so varied. They were denied like, the traditional path that men had to train in music schools and then go on to earn a living or even just to perform on the side. So those educational performance opportunities were not there for them. So they sort of had to carve out their own paths. And because of that, the roles they played can be like vastly different. So you have women who were composers. There's a lot of composers in the book. There are also a lot of performers. There's some teachers like Nadia Boulanger. There's people towards the um, later half of the book when we get into like the 20th century who really like carved out their own path or maybe they, they started as performers but quickly began to teach and, and their impact ended up being in that, in that space. So in the end, I ended up with 18 women, starts with Hildegard von Bingen, so almost a thousand years ago, and then it works its way up to, I think, Patsy Cline, the country singer, is the most recent woman in the book, since we didn't include anyone who's still alive and legacy is still being created. All right, so that's the Women of Western Music and good news on that one. We are currently developing interactive an interactive slides version of that book as well and hope to have that available early in 2021. Um, another resource by that same author, Anna Wentlet, who's a music educator um, in the Northeast, is Music Mosaic. And this book just came out this year and it has really taken off. Music Mosaic is a middle school general music curriculum that's looking at the development of music in America and its student-centered project-based activities that really make the student the leader of their own learning. Projects include things like Soundtrack of My Life, uh, West African Honor Poems, Ukulele Jam, uh, protest music, and so much more. Uh, these projects do not rely on knowledge of musical notation, so they work great for a general music curriculum, but just as well for your performance-based classes in any situations like maybe now where you aren't able to do all the performance-based things that you normally do and you need some other uh, music activities to do. Uh, it's a really modern pedagogy and all of these projects were developed by Anna in her own classroom. Uh, most of these are just ready to go right as is for remote teaching and some others can be adapted. Let's hear a little bit more about this book from Anna again. Music Mosaic is a middle school general music curriculum for grades five through nine that is specifically focused on the development of American popular music. And it's meant to be student-centered and very much project-based. So for every one of the 15 units in the book, you're getting a day or two of introductory work where you set out a topic and explain the parameters of the project students will be working on. And then you're setting them free either individually with partners or in small groups um, to make decisions and come up with their final work together. The goal being that our, we're encouraging our students to take risks, to be vulnerable, and to really 
proactively create themselves to, to make strong choices around their own identity. And that by having a student centered project based curriculum, you're leaving room for that kind of work to occur, that your students are really making choices according to their own artistic intent. And it starts with self analysis. So this whole curriculum, it's going to start with a unit or two that ask questions like, why do I listen to the music that I do? Um, what factors influenced the development of my own taste? And then for our society at large, how do we as a society come to define what's good or not? Um, how does a song stand the test of time? Like, what are the factors that make a stand song last past just the year that it was released? And you're gonna do some projects around that, like soundtrack of my life, where students make a, the soundtrack that represents who they are right now. And then we go back in time um, to the music that was being made in this, in this land before Europeans arrived. So we'll look at Native American chant, students will write their own, and then we start to slowly introduce the styles and the music performance um, methods, the instruments that were brought here by other cultures, um, whether that's immigrants or slaves who were brought here against their will. And then about halfway through the curriculum, we start to introduce the uniquely American music styles that developed here as a result of the organic combination of those cultures. So you're going to look at jazz, at musical theater, at rock and hip hop and slowly kind of work your way up to present time. By no means is this, this book gonna be a complete representation of all of the many, many, many music styles that exist in the United States, but it's a starting point. So I've made this curriculum myself for my own student body and I would encourage everyone to supplement with projects according to their unique student bodies so that you're doing two things. You're making sure that your students are represented in the music that you're choosing for your classes and that they see themselves in that music. And that then you're also introducing your students to diverse voices and diverse music styles beyond what they would otherwise experience in their regular lives. So that is Music Mosaic. I hope you'll check that out. Um, Andy, I'm going to turn it back over to you now. Hi, Krista. Hey, hey, wait, before you go, let me show you what I've been doing. I needed some therapy. Does this look familiar? <laughs> look I what I did. <laughs> I, I'm mostly in the lines. Uh, yes. Let me tell the folks at home what these things are. Krista modestly hasn't mentioned her own digital book that is new. And it is called Music Go Round. I think we actually have a slide to share right now. Music Go Round is 100 puzzle pages designed for young musicians. So on the topics that you're teaching your beginner, beginners, like the names of the lines and spaces, basic rhythms, things like that, musical terms that we teach in elementary school. This is a digital book. There are 10 types of puzzles. So you see rhythm hunt, color note, music mazes, puzzling pitches. There are also music math, music note spelling bee, word wizards, rhythm hunts, musical mix-ups, 10 types of puzzles and 10 of each. So 100 PDF puzzles ready to go out to your kids like today if you get a digital copy. I love this resource and it's really fun and I got to break out my crayons and colored pencils, which was therapy. Uh, let's move on to our next. Uh, we were so excited to start a brand new series during this remote teaching area era, and it's called Musictivities. We're going to premiere right now our Musictivities Set 1, which includes 20 different lessons, which we say are adaptable activities, so you can use them very easily at a distance or in class. And I know some of us have both of those things going on. These are contributed and written by some of our favorite elementary teachers, past and present from Alfred. And I have a little video which will explain more. This comes as a PDF file. Let's review. Presenting Musictivities, 20 adaptable activities that are perfect for distance learning. And here's why. The directions throughout this PDF are student facing, which means that kids can easily understand what to do while they're working on their own at home. Plus audio examples, video demonstrations, and websites are linked throughout. 
Let's start with a table of contents where lessons are organized by levels, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. This is roughly grades K through eight. Musical concepts and national standards are also listed for each activity. Now here's a quick tour of one sample lesson at each level, starting with musical opposites. It's a listening lesson. Students will click the play icon where they're gonna hear musical examples. And then they simply circle, is the music mostly high or low and all this iconic representation for beginners. There are several of these listening examples included for the musical opposites lesson. From intermediate, we'll take a look at drum major for the day, a conducting lesson. Help, the drum major for the high school band is out sick and we need you to fill in by conducting the Stars and Stripes Forever by John Philip Sousa. First, we learn just a little bit about cut time. We see the conducting pattern and then this links to a YouTube demonstration video. Then, of course, that audio icon will play a full recording of Stars and Stripes Forever to conduct along with at home. Here's an advanced lesson. I love this one on music and emotion. First, students read this article linked about a recent study done at UC Berkeley that found that music evokes at least 13 specific emotions. Then they can link to the interactive sound map where they will hear dozens of sound samples used throughout that study. Finally, they'll follow the directions to build a five song playlist, several five song playlists on Spotify, YouTube, and other platforms. All of the worksheets throughout are fillable which means students can actually type into this PDF and save their answers. I'm gonna look for silly songs I've decided. Next, let's tell you a little bit more about how to use this resource. It works great for distance learning if you're distributing lessons through Google Classroom or Seesaw or other learning platforms, even email this out to kids. Students may record their performances and send them back to you. You may do the lessons in a virtual meeting, so Zoom or Meet or Teams, things like that. All of the worksheets are fillable, many of the worksheets, I should say. You can print these at home or school if you're doing paper and pencil activities for packet work. You can always use that drawing tool if you need to do circles or anything like that. And of course, kids can scan or photograph their work to submit back to you. I hope you will enjoy set one of music activities. Yeah, those are so neat. And I want to tell you that set two is on the way. We are proofreading it right now. So there's going to be a whole series of these things to come. I think it's time we do a little singing. My motto when I had a classroom of my own was like, we only want a certain portion of talking and we must always sing. We must always sing. So I have a little song I'm going to teach you today. It comes from a collection called Sing Along Songs for Fall and Winter where there are 14 different songs included. Each of the fall and winter months has a song about the month and then one holiday song within each of those months. So these will take you right up through February. Um, and since it's October, I thought maybe we should sing the October song today. Here's what it looks like. We'll do call and response. October, October, when leaves start to change, you sing. October, October, when leaves start to change. Me, you might think it's crazy, you might think it's strange. You might think it crazy, you might think it's strange. Before they turn brown and fall off of the tree. Before they turn brown and fall off of the tree. The colorful leaves are for you and for me. Leaves are for you and for me. Good, and then that would repeat. Now, what's neat about this collection is it is interactive slides, and your singers will have a choice whether they want to sing with others, so they'll hear singers 
on the track, really good for those young ones at home, or sing alone where this is the goal that eventually they sing along with that accompaniment track. Here's a little bit more about sing along songs for fall and winter. Here is a quick tour of sing-along songs for fall and winter. These are interactive slides with words and music by Michael Souders. First thing I do is hit the space bar and it will take me to the next page which lists all 14 songs included in this slide collection. You notice there's a song about autumn and then one about each of the autumn months as well as one holiday within those months. Same is true of winter, the winter months, and one holiday within each of those months. Now for every song in this collection, your students will get to look at, first of all, the lyric sheets. And if we press the bar, I go right on to notation sheets. So you have two options of how they will view the songs and sing along. I should also show you, I think I'm gonna look at the song Ghosts and Ghoulies, that you have two options for what you hear on each slide. There's Sing Along With Others, a full recording including singers, and there is Sing Alone, accompaniments only. Let's do Sing Along With Others and get a feel for Ghosts and Ghoulies. Super fun. Now, if I go back to that home slide, I'm going to go forward by many months and let's look at the end of February for a song for Valentine's Day. And it's called Love, Love, Love. This time we'll keep up the lyric sheet and I'm going to hit Sing Alone. I know this song already, so I'm able to sing it alone. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> students enjoy sing-along songs for fall and winter. Thanks, Andy. I'm going to share with you a few products that are interactive software. And the first is Ukulele Explorer. Do you all have your ukuleles with you? Uh, I've actually been using Ukulele Explorer to learn a few songs at home on my own during this uh, COVID <laughs> pandemic that we're in that's kind of keeping us in the house more often. Um, this is a, uh, I mean, ukuleles are very uh, popular right now and it's relatively inexpensive to get a, a set for your classroom. And I know some lucky teachers are even able to send these instruments home with their kids as part of their music kits. Um, this resource is 10 lessons that are structured around popular songs and it gets the kids playing right away. Let's watch a little video about it and then I want to talk to you about how you could use this for remote teaching. Ukulele Explorer. 10 ukulele lessons with strum along songs by Daniel Bayert and John Stone a must-have resource for any music classroom equipped with ukuleles. The creative pair of authors, one a general music teacher, the other a private ukulele instructor, has assembled an amazing interactive journey to quickly get your kids playing a host of familiar pop songs, including Roar, Best Day of My Life, Over the Rainbow, Riptide, and more. To begin, touch any of the islands to navigate to a specific lesson. Each lesson starts with tuning the instrument, then introduces a chord and a strum pattern. Next, incorporate the chord or pattern into a brief exercise for isolated practice before strumming along with an engaging performance piece. The culminating activity for each lesson is an interactive assessment. In addition to the software, reproducible PDFs of chord diagrams, ukulele charts, and singer pages for each song are provided. Embedded with fret diagrams, hand position photos, 
rhythmic chants for every new pattern, helpful getting started screens, plus appealing demo and play along tracks, the adventure is only a few clicks away. Ukulele Explorer is compatible with all interactive whiteboards and both Mac and PC operating systems and can even be operated with just a computer and a digital projector. The software and PDFs can be accessed through the included CD or as a download. Visit alfred.com or contact your favorite music retailer for more information about Ukulele Explorer. All right, so if you are doing synchronous instruction, maybe you're able to share your screen with your students uh, to use this product. Or if you have a hybrid schedule, perhaps you're using the software in your classroom and then uh, printing out the PDF song sheets and so the kids can practice with those at home. Um, <clears throat> the software itself, you can purchase either on a CD, you can buy the CD and install it on your computer, or you can download that directly from JW Pepper's website so that you've got uh, the digital version of it. It's a great way to keep students engaged in making music on their own. Uh, a couple of other interactive software products. Do any of you use storybooks in your classroom? I know many elementary school teachers do, and we have two interactive storybooks based on um, unique historical musicians. They are the tale of Guido D'Arezzo and J.P. Sousaphone. These interactive storybooks are adorably uh, illustrated, as you can see from the cover there, recorded by a professional voice artist and include fun interactive elements that reveal little surprises along the way. Uh, they're available again as a physical CD or you can download them directly from Pepper's website so that you have a digital copy. Let's take a look at the tale of Guido D'Arezzo. The tale of Guido D'Arezzo, an interactive storybook about the inventor of music notation. AD, a boy was born. His name was Guido. He grew up in Arezzo, a small city in Italy. So he became known as Guido d'Arezzo, or Guido of Arezzo. Learn how this medieval monk laid the groundwork for the system of music notation that we use today. His true story is told with beautiful illustrations and age-appropriate vocabulary. Touch the arrows to turn the pages. As you turn, a professional narrator reads the text aloud, accompanied by appropriate period music and whimsical sound effects. Guido told his choir director about his idea of writing the sounds of the songs, but the director did not approve. He wanted the children to continue memorizing all of the songs they sang. Touch the highlighted elements to watch the story come to life, with special features such as additional listening, interactive activities, and pop-up illustrations. Que es una idea terrible. And guess what? The choir children got it. They were reading music. No longer was it necessary to memorize the songs to remember them. Visit Alfred.com or contact your favorite music dealer for more information about this innovative general music resource. Prego! So cute. Uh, the second uh, interactive storybook is J.P. Sousaphone, in which we discover the history of John Philip Sousa and his sousaphone. You will learn that Sousa worked with an instrument maker named James Welsh Pepper. James Welsh Pepper, does that sound familiar to you? Uh, that's because today we know him as J.W. Pepper. Yes, the founder of your favorite music retailer is included in the story. 
the book also includes an authentic U.S. Marine Band recording of the Stars and Stripes Forever, and the historical facts were approved by a sousaphone, uh, sousaphone historian and a senior musicologist at the Library of Congress. So it's, it's a very uh, cute book, it's the same sort of setup where you can order the CD for the physical product or you can download it uh, from Pepper's website. Andy, I am going to pass it back to you now. I am here. Um, I would like to share with you my screen, everybody, and I think I can do that for some really neat things in case you haven't really uh, dug into Pepper's website, which I think we all have, but being a choral conductor myself, I'm always looking for choral repertoire, even in this era of mo mostly virtual performances, right? So I knew I was looking for something uh, for the holidays, and I looked up theme from Elf, because I saw this in another session, and I really thought it was a cool piece. Just a little tour of what you'll find on Pepper's website. You see that you have resources like an audio, full audio uh, demo. This is the uh, PDF. You can watch a video of the score and sound. Also coming down to the second light item, you see that there's an L circle edition. This is their large print edition. So for those of you who have um, any students or singers that are visually impaired and you want slightly bigger music, that's a great thing to do. Get the large print editions. Um, let's see what else here. There's an e-print edition that would come in really handy nowadays where you can just download that PDF and be ready to go. There are other voicings, so two-part with a large print, with an e-print. The PACD is performance and accompaniment, so we all know about those recorded accompaniments, which will come in very handy when you're trying to create a virtual choir this season. And then this new item is really what I wanted to talk about, a choreography digital download. So what on earth is that? It's a brand new item where single songs are available with choreography teachers like myself, like Sally Albrecht, you might see Greg Gilpin on these, or the choreographer Jennifer Goldsmith, and we teach you choreography that you can download the video right to your desktop and learn it there. I'm going to show you a little sample here of the virtual choreography from Theme from Elf. I designed it for screen choreography. Check it out. Beginning of the song, let's be fixing our hats and checking them out in the screen. When the music changes, we're going to wave to our neighbors on either side, above and below, any order you want. Now tilt the head, tilt the head, back, forth, tilt the head, other side, and back and forth, tilt the head, hands right foot, two, left foot, two, come up, two, three, four, drop them, and shrug them, and flip them, and triple clap, and pop. Tilt the head twice to the right, just like before, twice to the left, back and forth, and two on the right. Now left for two, right for two, back and forth, and two over here. Hands twice to the right, twice to the left. I lean my body the opposite way, and we drop them, and flip them, and in, and clap, clap, and burst. Grab that snowflake. The bottom of the screen, right and left, figure eight. That was six. Now I circle. Left this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now three circles. Two. Each one gets bigger. Three. Come forward. See. Now I'm going to grab that kazoo and march in my chair. Anything you want, your march is your own expression. And we go back to what we did before. Right for two, left for two, back and forth and two. Left for two, right for two, back and forth for two. Hands go to the right and the left. They zigzag up, two, three, four. Drop and fist across, burst. Now here's that index finger from your shoulder, pointing to the webcam. Smile. 
<laughs> well, Andrea, that brings us to the end of what we brought to share today. I hope that these resources will be helpful for the teachers out there who are really adapting to a whole new reality this year. I personally have found this pretty exciting to adapt to uh, a whole new thing. And thankfully, technology has been there to support us on this journey. Absolutely. This has been so much fun. I hadn't seen that elf video yet. That was totally adorable. <laughs> you didn't have any fun <laughs> making that at all, did you? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> okay. Well, everyone, we have reached our Q&A section. So we've been answering a few questions uh, throughout, but we do have some more here for you now. So this is great. Um, okay. So I'm going through. I'm going to start at the top. So there are some questions here. There's, there's one about, I've purchased both the Canon collection and the Vocalize PowerPoint. How can I select one slide from Vocalize to connect to my online platform? And they're using Canvas. I would rather assign one slide at a time. So I'm, I'm sure you've gotten this question before. So I'm thinking that I could answer this, but Krista will probably do it more succinctly. Is that true, Krista? Or would you like me to try? <laughs> I would say is um, that I don't know the ins and outs of how Canvas, the connection works there, but you can adapt this, uh, your PowerPoints, make a copy and then delete other slides or do whatever you need to adapt it to be able to share it. So don't feel like you've got that PowerPoint and you can't break it apart or do anything with it. You could make a copy of that or copy one individual slide into a new PowerPoint Break it apart however you need to. Uh, and because there are so many different uh, platforms that people are using, it's, it's difficult for us to make the product available uh, to meet everyone's needs. So adapt as needed. Yeah, if I could just add one thing, and this is an obvious thing, but I know that I would make sure you mark your complete copy as your personal full copy. Never mess with that, but then copy and paste and delete from other versions. So you can create a different version for each grade of your choir, each section of your choir, individual students, and really customize what everyone's working on. Excellent. All right. Um, there's an easy one next. I'm going to take this one. So it says, will there be a follow-up email with links to these products? Yes, you are all going to get an email tomorrow. It's going to have a link to the recording that you're watching that of the session right now, plus a link to uh, basically a shopping list on our website that will have everything. And I believe Michaela is also going to pop a link in the chat that'll have a copy of the PowerPoint that Andy and Krista have been using. So you'll have all of the item numbers on there as well in case you want to start shopping tonight. So I hope that answers your question. And then on that email, you're also going to get your certificate of attendance. So that will be something to watch out for. All right, cool. Um, all right. So here's another question. What if my group is not meeting live? Therefore, we do not actually have group rehearsals. My classes are recorded and hypothetically, the kids come in and view things when it works for them. How would you use these kind of resources that way? I honestly think I would use them a lot like I've been using them today, like how I taught that song October. You know, you can video yourself uh, teaching the song by rote. You can, like we said, create, just take out the certain slides that you want to focus on. If today you're only really working on Scott Joplin, who's part of the Accent on Composers collection, just copy those slides into the digital platform that you're using. Does that seem right to you, Krista? Yeah, I mean, obviously everybody's in different circumstances and there's no right or wrong answer, I think. You have to uh, just do what works for your group. I know we all wanna be able to sing together again, but maybe this is a time to focus more on individual vocal work, uh, doing those, those exercises at home on their own. And as you mentioned earlier, Andy, scheduling more one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings. Okay. Okay. There are two questions left. Uh, I'm going to take the easier one first. Any instrumental books, not just ukulele, strings, orchestra? I mean, I know you guys are elementary and choral music, but do you know what your band and orchestra people are doing? <laughs> they have just released a new exciting series, which is called the Flex. Am I saying it right, Krista? 
yes. flex series we're offering like flexible instrumentation because if you you may not be meeting with your entire orchestra or band you may not have everybody but creating small ensembles with arrangements that would work with very flexible instrumentation i know that's been in the works as a way to sort of address this remote situation other things that you know of krista uh, not not off not offhand, sorry. <laughs> I, I will say that we do have a, a, a bunch of publishers have been now working on the flex thing. So this is something that everybody realizes is a need. Um, we have created uh, some filters on our website. So if you go to the different categories, band, um, orchestra, uh, any of those kind, choral, you'll see that we have um, on the band and the orchestra especially, we'll have filters for flex instrumentation. So you can just go to there and it'll show you all the different options in those in those categories. So I encourage you to check those out. Okay, there have been several questions about inclusivity when we were talking about the composer books and, um, and I think it was also a musical mosaic that it came up. Um, do either of you want to address that one? Yeah, it's, it's a tricky, of course we do want to address it and we right. don't want to avoid it, but it's, it's a very tricky topic, Andrea, and I think we should do an entire webinar on this someday. Um, the fact of the matter is, I will own this a little bit, as an industry of educators and publishers, we haven't done a great job in the past. I'm just going to come out and say it. And it's like what we're realizing across this country and this world. Uh, a lot of places have fallen short. And I, for one, am thankful for this moment of light saying, okay, it's time that we do better. So Alfred has taken several initial steps, uh, such as we examined our whole choral catalog very quickly and knowing what we know now we made some decisions, many decisions, where we thought this particular song, now that we know the deep history and the possible inappropriate context, we put several things out of print. We thought that we didn't even hesitate to do that. Um, we started developing and reaching out and hoping to find more writers of diversity. We can't wait to have more people. Just this month, we released some new public choral publications by composers of color that we're so proud to have as part of the Alfred team. We have, uh, there's an upcoming webinar that's going to be happening in association with National ACDA, which Alfred is proudly a sponsor for at the highest level of sponsorship that's all about uh, teaching it and developing composers of color because we think this is very, very important. I will say there are products that are being formulated and created right now as we speak. Just so folks out there know, it takes sometimes up to two years to get a, an idea from that light bulb to the store where you would purchase it. And so, you know, this, this issue really heated up this year at the beginning of 2020. And we have moved as quickly as we can and know that you will see even more results coming down the pike. And honestly, that's, I think, the best answer I can give at this moment. And, and I hope that people will know that that is earnest and true. And I speak for Alfred, but mostly I speak for me, a music educator who believes it is time to diversify what we're offering. Andy, I would just add, uh, I mean, I echo everything that you said there, and I know uh, we've had many conversations about this internally, and our company itself is looking at our practices. Uh, you won't, you know, you guys probably won't see that from the outside, but just know that our company internally is looking at these things as well, because we are committed to this. Great. I, I really appreciate the conversation on that because I think it's, it's a conversation we need to keep having. Um, that's really good. Thank you. Um, so a couple of things. Okay, we've got some really good um, reactions to that. So thank you. A um, couple of questions. And if you have to leave us, that's, that's fine. But I just want to address a couple real quick ones. Um, Rebecca wanted to know, is there a way to easily search for choral music that offers streaming rights so that we can perform through a virtual platform legally? I'm going to take this one real quick. 
because we just did an entire webinar on this about two weeks ago. And if you're interested in it, um, you can check our webinar out. There's a link to it at the bottom of our homepage where it says more from JW Pepper. There's a link to the blog that has a recording and all of our links and all that. We do on our coral page have a filter now for coral bundles that are being put out by multiple publishers that include everything you need to do a virtual performance, including the rights um, for several, uh, it's, it's publications that they own the rights to, so that's easiest. Um, but it also, some of them are including the rights to uh, reproduce their music. Some of them don't come with music and you have to buy that separately. Uh, they all come with the different audio tracks. I mean, it's really, every one of them is different with what they're including, but I encourage you to check those out because it's another really innovative um, response to the current situation we're in. So yay. So go to our Coral page and check out the virtual bundle link, uh, filter and you'll see all kinds of in interesting things there. So um, Krista and Andy, one more question for you both. Um, this one, I teach at multiple sites. Would I need a multiple site license? Meaning is it okay for me to share across the school district or should it be considered a single use product in one location? That's a good question. Yeah, that is a really good question. What do you think, Krista? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, I was kind of thinking about, you know, if I had uh, like a physical version of Music Mosaic or Accent on Composers uh, and I was teaching with that, I would use it for all of my classes that I teach. Yes, yes, you would. Mm -hmm. It would be okay. in your bag and you would take it to the each school. So yes, go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that does it. Now we wanted to go right up to five. So it's 5.03, I mean, Eastern time. So I think we did pretty good, even with all the questions. So I really want to thank you both for being our guests today. We really appreciate your time on this. Uh, thank you to everyone who gave up your time to watch us this afternoon. And if you're watching us on video, thank you for your time as well. Um, if you are watching this on video and you made it to this point and you would like a certificate of attendance as well, all you need to do is email me, Andrea, at events at jwpepper.com. Tell me you got to this point in the video and I will send you that certificate. So you have to watch the end to get to that point. <laughs> um, so again, if you missed anything, you'll get an email tomorrow that has the link to the recording of the session on it. And you'll also have the opportunity to do a brief survey. It's literally three questions when you log off and please give us your feedback because we really, really want that. So uh, Andy and Krista, any parting words for our audience today? I just want to say like, wow, you guys, uh, you teachers are out there rocking it. Thank you for doing what you're doing. And we just send you love and encouragement and, uh, you know, to, to keep, keep your head up and we will be back to singing again. We absolutely will. Thank you for saying that, Krista. I echo that sentiment. Music teachers, you are awesome. You are learning new things and making it happen. Because at the end of the day, music will absolutely survive this and we will still be the people sharing it in the classroom. That's the deal. Oh, that is excellent. Yes. And on that note, we are going to sign off. So thank you to all of you. Enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you again for being a part of our Pepper family. We'll see you again. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs>